take you on a little journey today. And this is going to come around in the end about using essential meaning as a means of communication, both perceiving and expressing. So, this all has to do with today being the new moon in Gemini, the third month in the lunar calendar. This is the Hebrew month of Sivan. Now, Gemini, the zodiacal sign of the moment, both the moon and the sun this morning were in the exact same degree of Gemini, both together. And this begins the third month of Sivan. Um, <clears throat> during this month, the sun will reach its zenith. It will be the longest day, the most sun in the year will happen during this month, towards the end of this month, this moon, this lunation. Um, <clears throat> So that's a very significant moment. The summer solstice will be this month. Uh, Sivan itself, the Hebrew word, um, means time. You know, it's, it's a period of time has reached its zenith. Um, <clears throat> Zayin, Gemini, is the letter <clears throat> Zayin, in Hebrew. And <clears throat> this spans the connection between Chokmah and Tiferet. So that's why I say this is all about Tiferet, really. Uh, this moment. Uh, the symbolism of this moment. The essential meaning of this moment. Um, <clears throat> so Tiferet receives three influences in its creation. The first influence is through the path of Beth from Kether. So this is where the eye explodes, really. It becomes an infinitely a faceted diamond in the sunlight, glinting all of these expressions of itself. And it creates the realm of what I call the solitary selves. Tiferet, beauty. The second influence is from Chokmah, wisdom, coming into Tiferet. By the path of Zayin, by the uh, path of Gemini. Zayin is the sword. Just to think for a second, to feel the essential meaning of that image of a sword. All that it means, you know, associate all the ideas and the images with it. That's the meaning of the sword. It is this forceful, um, directional, um, extension of the hand and of the will, okay? So this is the passage of essential meaning down into Tiferet, down into the realm of the solitary self, so the infinite number of solitary selves. Now what that does, what the meaning of that descent into this realm is, and the action that it has in this realm, the impact it has upon this realm, it's a twin, you know, a two-sided action. It creates an essential meaning, and the Catholic brilliance are both the ultimate in creativity. What it creates in Tiferet, the meaning is self and other. So the first time in the tree, self 
and other come into existence in Tiferet. This is why it is the, the solitary self. You know, from our own perspective, it's, it's just me in this world of other. Surrounding me is other. But I am here. So this is the influence of Hakma and Tiferet. It creates self and other. So you have these facets of the I experiencing self and other. And then from Bina, the third influence, comes the, the birthing of form through uh, the path of Heth, cancer, a water sign, gives birth to all the, the infinite number of forms of individual selves, of solitary selves in Tiferet. So the lesson here from from <clears throat> from Zain is self and other, and that essential meaning is what connects self and other. Okay, it's how self expresses itself. It's how self is creative. <clears throat> So, the key to communication between selves here in the sequential realm of time and space, where there are an infinite number of selves, the key to communication between one self and another self is essential meaning. It's really that simple. That is how we communicate with each other um, at its essence um, we we cover that over and, and weave into it talking and uh, the, the various forms of expression that we're familiar with but in communication the first thing we perceive the the initial part of all perception is the essential meaning. That what I've talked about before, the direct perception of essential meaning, it happens immediately. It comes before thought, before labels, before words, before ideas. It's just instant. That is the root of communication. So we get that first automatically we usually don't notice it we just notice the effects it has upon us and specifically upon our brain it starts thinking you know it starts labeling everything and that's what we think of as perception but the root of perception is that immediate hit of essential meaning of all perception so uh, and <laughs> it's at the root of all expression. Before we do anything, the essential meaning of our action manifests first and expresses itself through the action, through the doing. Uh, what we think of as our doing comes after our expression of essential meaning. Just as the perception, the thinking comes after the integrating of the essential meaning is what we really think of as perception. The way that our brain integrates it. Okay. So, we can intentionally and with full consciousness communicate with each other from one self to another self of any form any form we can communicate intentionally and consciously through this medium of essential meaning we can perceive 
with essential meaning, <clears throat> we can perceive essential meaning, and we can project essential meaning. We can manifest essential meaning. So we can communicate, which is a, a back and forth um, exchange of information. Essential meaning. <laughs> you know, all communication, again, is about this exchange of essential meaning. This is what is happening, you know, if we um, perceive it. It's just so fast. It's instant. So, if you've worked with the <clears throat> direct perception of essential meaning, um, and you have to have worked with that before you can get to you know, even coming close to uh, communicating with the central meaning, you have to be at a point where you can look at anything and perceive its essential meaning just that quickly. Go from thing to thing. You know, I see the essential meaning, that, 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 that. You want to be that fluent, you know, that proficient in the perception of essential meaning. Um, <clears throat> so, <clears throat> this requires a slightly different mindset than the, the direct perception of a thing's <clears throat> essential meaning. Okay. This is an instantaneous uh, part of perception. Um, what we need to do is lengthen that. You know, uh, put ourselves in that place of the direct perception of essential meaning and stay there so that we have a continuous perception of essential meaning and we will perceive uh, fluctuations in that. Uh, in here, it's very slow. I have to sit with it for a long time, um, or I have to project energy into it, and then I'll need to see uh, an immediate change in the essential meaning. Uh, in talking with a person, the changes are rapid, very rapid. Um, <clears throat> so, you, you, you put yourself in this prolonged perception, as it were, of essential meaning. And it'll take practice, but it's doable, you know. Um, you just have to get in that groove and stay with it. Sort of ride the, way, the wave, you know, the crest of the wave. Surf. Um, the essential meaning. And <clears throat> so, <clears throat> if someone's talking to you and you are in this perceptive state, um, <clears throat> you will see <clears throat> the difference between their words and what their essential meaning is projected. Um, and you will see similarities. It varies. But you will see what the person is really saying. You know, it might not have anything to do with their words. They might be speaking about, you know, the, this piece of themselves that is so insecure that they need to impress everybody around them to you know, build up that feeling of security. You know, that might be what their words, you know, are expressing, but their words don't convey that. Their essential meaning does. <clears throat> so this gives you an insight, you know, into what's genuinely being communicated. Working on the same basis, you can understand. I mean, you can get the essence, the essential meaning behind what a person is communicating under any circumstances, speaking or not. Um, 
no matter what language, you know, is being spoken, because it's not communicated through the words of the language, not much of it's communicated through the words of the language. It's more communicated in the tone of voice, the, the body movements, you know, the expression on the face, and just the, the energy coming from a person. <clears throat> so, this has no language barriers. It's universal. Um, I communicate with my cat in this way. On a daily basis, I mean, we're constantly communicating in this way. You know, I have learned uh, what different things mean to him. So I can communicate to him in a language he's familiar with. You know, not this human speak. Um, you can communicate with anything. So, <clears throat> that's the perceptive part of the communication. The projective part of communication is simpler, yet more difficult. <laughs> um, <clears throat> it's really very simply, you know, having an intention in your mind. And there is sort of a... <clears throat> Boy, it's, it's hard to describe. It's sort of a place in your awareness where your will uh, comes out through your pores, where every part of you is expressing your meaning in that moment. You know, your hands, your face, your, the rest of your body. Um... <clears throat> That communicates a central meaning. I mean, it just shouts a central meaning to another person. You know, whether they speak your language or even communicate in the same way through a vocalization, um, it will communicate your meaning. So it, yeah. It's just a sort of a little shift in your awareness to where you're expressing with your whole body. Um, <clears throat> I'm uh, trans working on the uh, Step 6 um, uh, video, uh, turning it into text uh, for a future book. And in Step 6, uh, it, it, part of the exercises are about the tripolar uh, action, um, the magical action, it's called, um, and it's, it's basically that, you know, it really is, your mental, astral, and physical bodies all working together in full consciousness, that's the thing, it's the, this full consciousness of each, every part of yourself as you, you know, express, um, this idea, this feeling, um, this moment of will, okay? That's how I communicate with my cat. You know, I'll vocalize as well because that's how he knows, you know, I'm communicating with him. A lot of animals are that way. Uh, the vocalizations are not uh, so much or not always language as we think of it as, you know, a string of words that together have a meaning. What they are is uh, an alert. Hey, I'm communicating something. And the communication is extraneous uh, to, to the language, you know, to the vocalization. At any rate, so, you know, he knows that I'm communicating something to him and we communicate basically through a central meaning. I learned in this way just how significant to a cat a purr is. You know, how, how loving, 
absolutely I abandon myself to you kind of love that it expresses. So I purr to my cat as well because I know he understands that language. And how I learned that was, you know, through essential meaning. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, anyhow. So, that's my little uh, lecture on communication through essential meaning. There's many things that can be accomplished with essential meaning that I really didn't cover in uh, the Book of Eric's. Um, and, you know, all it takes is a little imagination. That's really all it takes. Is. And curiosity to figure it out. So, that's it this time. See you again next time. Bye-bye.